Uh, welcome to the MBS Sojo keynote. Sorry. Okay, I'm now making plugins for 19 years. So it started in 2001 where we had a need for a few extra functions. And since then we are collecting quite a lot. It's my full-time job for a couple of years now. So not a hobby. And it's a huge toolbox and we mainly added classes because we needed them ourselves in our projects because I'm also doing consulting from time to time. And we added classes clients asked for. Like recently where I got a call, I need a class tomorrow to replace some other class. Uh, well, that got a night shift for me. So we have currently uh, packaged uh, plugins into 40, well, plugins. Internally, it's something like 500. 500 little plugin projects, and we bundled it into 40 plugins for you. We have over 65,000 items in the documentation. It's a lot. If you spot an error, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Um, I'm constantly changing things because someone is asking and so I want to avoid the next one asking so I change the documentation right away. We have over 2,600 classes and over 2,000 example projects. And don't expect me to update those for any new API changes soon. That will be a big project. But they all built in the current version. I have automated tests to load project, build it, report any errors. So I can run a test over a day and get all the projects built one after the other. We support a lot of Soju versions. So actually we still have plugins for Real Studio because some people ask for them. But in general with each change in Sojo, we make a change in the plugins, so the newer plugins support the older versions, but of course the older plugins may need an update. So if you installed the new release from Sojo, you may have a need to install the latest plugins from us to avoid getting compilation errors. Here's a list of the changes in the recent versions. So we added 64-bit and ARM uh, as, um, targets. We had to change some parameter names because of new keywords. There were changes to the handling of Windows and Linux APIs. The database got data types. The WebKit framework got updated for Windows and stuff like the folder item changes in the latest version. And a few of those are quite um, difficult because some of the folder items uh, functions, if you use the older plugins, on macOS Catalina, they would simply not work. There's no error. That's uh, in some cases no error, so it's a silent failure. And that's that's not good. So latest plugins uh, fix that. And instead of telling you everything in this, in the plugins, we want to tell you what happens in the last conference. <coughs> So, for example, I include now the complete vision framework from Apple, wrap it in a plugin class, in, uh, in plugins, and we have a lot of classes there, and you can use all those new machine learning features from uh, Apple on your, on your Macs. We have a few functions which uh, work on macOS 10.14, Mojave, and some which are only for 10.15, Catalina. For example, with the text recognition, the older operation system could just tell you that there is text and the newer version can tell you what text there is. And also you benefit from the QR code detection, which also can be used together with um, our re video recording classes, so you can have live detection within a video stream. <laughs> then I added a tag clip. That's a cross-platform library to read audio and video tags from audio and video files. So if you have an mp3 file, for example, we can read uh, the title of the album, the artist, and so on. And we can also write them. 
I added a class for LC4 compression for a client. This is a very efficient um, compression algorithm. And you can use the library cost platform. And there are different levels on compression. So you can decide whether you want to put a lot of CPU time or uh, not so much CPU time into the compression. So you get more or less dense compression. And, but the decompression <coughs> is always very fast. So you can optimize your compression and that's LC4. We also have SITLIP and other compression algorithms available and we support a lot of barcodes. So this is a poster I made with about 30 barcodes you can use in Sojo. The plugin actually supports 80 different types, but those are the most common. So if you need anything like data matrix or QR code, you can use our plugin. Then we got a class for a um, copy file. That's a low-level function on macOS, which you can use to do file copying with a lot of options. Uh, we have events for brokers, so you can notice uh, well, how far you are in the copying a folder hierarchy. And it can do recursive co copying, and it preserves all the metadata for the files. Then we have plugin classes for Java. So we added new functions where you can call a Java function and pass all the parameters as variants in Sojo and get the result back as variants. That makes it much easier because you no longer need to prepare a memory block with the parameters. So you can load a Java class, you can make an instance, so you get an object, you can call methods on it or call static methods, set and get properties, and now everything is possible with variants, so we automatically convert all the Java data types to Sojo data types and back. We have uh, three method calling methods. So on the Java class object, you can call the static method, and on an object, you can call the normal or the non-virtual method, which avoids um, calling an overwritten method. We have field and static field to get properties from a so, um, Java class. And with new object, you can call the constructor and also pass the parameters as variant. Then we have our classes for LDAP and Active Directory. We now have a new set of classes using the Open Directory framework from Apple. We cover the mostly of the framework, so you can query LDAP servers with the native functions on macOS, or we have, um, oh, that's with OD session, yeah. and we have with LDAP MBS still the cross platform classes using either the Windows LDAP API or the Open LDAP API on Mac and Linux. But Apple wants you to use a newer framework, so well, we give you the choice whether you prefer to write cross platform code or whether you want the best experience on a Mac. We also got a Windows AD system information class, which allows you to learn the information of the user logged in via Active Directory. So you can learn the username and the computer for serving, uh, providing the Active Directory. <coughs> then we have classes for large numbers. <coughs> So a large number MBS class is our integer data type with up to 4,000 bits. That is a lot of stuff, but some people need to do math with really big numbers, especially if you're doing something with encryption yourself. Usually you would just load um, maybe an encryption key and use the encryption functions in the plugin, but sometimes people like to do the math themselves. We have functions to work with prime numbers, so you can create very big prime numbers and you can test if something is a prime number. We have the uh, greatest common divider function, so you can, which may help you if you do the math. And we also got our big number MBS class, and that's a 320-bit floating point number. So instead of a normal double with 64-bit, you can put here much more digits. I think it's Precision is about 100 digits before the dot. And of course, 
also behind the dot, but there the, it, it depends on the if your number is a is representable as a fraction of twos. So we got the continuity camera feature with macOS uh, 10.14 and uh, iOS 12. So you can write a Mac application which uses your iOS device as a camera. You initiate it from your Mac by either uh, starting the process directly for a camera or showing the menu. And if both devices are near each other and on the same iCloud account, the iPhone will uh, show the uh, picture taking window and on a Mac, oh yeah, if you have several devices you can show this menu so the user can select and you can either take a picture or a document. So here's a, a sheet window which shows up when you choose uh, to take a picture and then the iPhone will show a screen like this where you have your important document on your desk you go with the camera, you take a picture, the picture is uh, aligned, so it's uh, looking correctly. And then if you scan a document, you can have several pages and get back a PDF document. Or if you scan just a picture, you get back the picture. <coughs> this is a nice feature to just have a button in the user interface and let the user take a picture or scan a document. Then we have MapKit functions. That's uh, from Apple, using the Apple Maps. And it's for macOS 64-bit applications only. You can show maps in 2D and 3D with satellite images or with um, uh, streets or the hybrid mode with both. You can render snapshots, so you can tell the plugin to give you a picture of a certain coordinate, uh, showing the satellite image or whatever. You can plan a route. So you, if you make an invitation to people, you can put everyone's route to the party location on the, on the invitation. And you can get those directions as objects, so you can walk through the list of steps to do and see for each step the coordinates of start and end and how long it is and uh, the textual description. So you can rebuild the Apple Maps application in Soldier if you want. You can add custom overlays and annotations to the map, so you can draw lines, you can um, draw um, polygons with, with highlighting a certain area. And you can put your custom pictures on the map. So here's our example project showing a normal map of Europe with a German localization. And here's an, another screenshot of uh, a rendering of New York with a little bit 3D graphic. And here's a map of the Soldier Developer Conference locations in the US. Uh, just to show you how to put a picture there. And I just used the Soldier application icon for the uh, individual locations. Then we have SceneKit. That's for Mac 64-bit um, framework from Apple to show 3D graphics and load um, objects, create primitive objects, add rendering options, uh, lights, uh, animated and you will learn more in Stephanie's uh, presentation tomorrow about it. It uses the metal engine from Apple so you get the best performance. You can just add new balls, new rectangles, whatever text, 3D text to your objects at runtime and you can move the camera around either by using the mouse or by, by your code. You can again render snapshots if needed and here are a few pictures from our sample projects. So we can just create objects in 3D space and show something to the user. This is a, oops, a picture from a, from a Towers of Hanoi uh, game where we actually animate the game going on. You may have seen that on our website. Oh, there it is. So, 
This is an example project you can download, made in Sojo. soon finished. You can play with example, you can uh, set the number of um, elements there, so five is quite quick, but you can change it to more if you want to have a longer movie. <coughs> <coughs> Next we have uh, JSON improvements, so the MBS uh, plugin comes with our own JSON MBS class, which provides uh, a lot of functionality around JSON data structures. It's a bit optimized for speed, so a lot of people use it because they need the speed. We got recently a sort method. So if you have a list of items in a JSON um, array, you can sort them. We got uh, new functions to pass and generate JSON. And this includes the convert functions, which convert between our JSON objects and Sojo classes like our dictionaries with arrays and variants for the values. That makes the conversion between your data structures in Sojo and a JSON block much easier. And we improved the 64-bit handling. So if you put a big number into the plugin, we make sure that you get back the big number in the JSON. So even if you like if you put a big 64-bit number there, the normal <coughs> JSON classes in Sojo may convert it to a double which may mm, cause some rounding problems on the end, and we preserve those numbers. We can also handle much bigger numbers if needed, because you can just pass a number as a string and we put it in the JSON if needed. We also got a few utility functions, like equals, where we can compare to JSON objects. This can be a, whole, a big hierarchy of objects with all arrays and we compare everything and see if it's exactly the same. We also got utility functions to find the index of objects in an array or to find a value in object array. It's, it's faster to do the loop in C than in, in Sojo. And we have a useful function JSON to HTML. So you can actually get a HTML back, which you can load in a HTML viewer to preview the JSON to the user or to yourself for debugging. <coughs> then we improved the SQL plugin coming uh, from us. So we added last year the uh, KubeSQL client. So you can use KubeSQL database with uh, our plugin. We also got a uh, new support for using SSL with kubesql. <coughs> we have the internal kubesql library model. So you can load your own kubesql DLL or dialib, or you can just tell the plugin to provide the library we built into the plugin. But we have it as a separate model. So depending on whether you use the model or not, the kubesql library is added to your application or not. This keeps applications smaller, which don't use it. Same with our built-in uh, Postgres and SQLite models. We got uh, improvements for 64-bit handling. So uh, we avoid, uh, again, we, we pass 64-bit directly and I'd avoid them converting to doubles. I wrote the caching algorithm. So if, if you have a record set from a remote database, there's an option to cache it locally in memory. So we load all the data, keep it in memory. You can move uh, from first record to last and back as, as much as you want. And we have the functionality to um, stream block objects directly to folder items. And you can also pass memory blocks for blobs. And the streaming is quite useful if you have big files. We have dictionaries uh, on the plugin now, options, bound values, bound types. So you can inspect a prepared statement and see what values were bound. And you can see which options are set on a connection, on a command, on a statement, on a parameter. And we, of course, uh, we always uh, update to the lightest libraries from SQLite and SQL API. 
to keep up to date with changes there. And currently we are working on the SQL AP5 update, which brings a few nice additions for our plugin. Chart Director is our library for showing charts. And as you may know, we support over uh, we support 29 types of charts fully with Unicode support and 3D charts. We updated to Chart Director 6.3 version. We updated examples for high resolution and newer social versions. We make sure all the pictures we render have the proper DPI value now. We updated the font handling recently for Macros Catalina. So if you're using Chart Director and you want to use it with Macros Catalina, please update to the latest version. And here are a few example charts. Yeah. Then we got a class for text conversions. We had the need to convert another text encoding which is not supported directly in Sojo. So I made this class. It allows you to either convert just a piece of text or convert ongoing text coming in over, for example, network connection. It has over 100 encodings, including some very old uh, versions of uh, DOS encodings, which one, uh, who one client needed. It includes UTF-7, if you need that ever. Uh, I can see. It's an open source one. Yeah. It's just a thin, a thin wrapper around, and uh, because we needed a special text encoding. We got the classes to read and write uh, archives. We support a couple of formats there, including zip and tar. A couple of compression algorithms, not, uh, not all. Uh, we can, uh, with one of the examples, archive a whole folder. So instead of running the zip command line tool, you could do that in Sojo yourself. You can, of course, also expand to a folder. Or you can just, on creation, you can generate data and just pass it in memory to the zip file to be created. And you can even create the zip file in memory if you want. But you're very flexible with the classes. And those new classes um, support the metadata, which includes file permissions on Mac, as well as extended attributes. And that is much better than the old zip classes we had before, which are still present for compatibility. Then on encryption, we got a few SMIME functions. So you can now, if you want, develop your own uh, email message sending for with, with SMM encryption. We got the crypto token kit classes from for the framework from Apple with the same name. Those allow you to talk to external card readers. Uh, we still have the smart card classes, um, but uh, Apple prefers you to use the newer classes, especially for newer devices, because I expect that newer devices will have drivers only for the new framework. But we still have Smart Card MBS available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, in case you need that. And I have customer which uh, use it for um, the Belgium passport or the Swiss health cards. Yeah, picture of two readers. So it works with both um, those contactless and the uh, readers to put in the card. <coughs> we got um, classes for uh, PKCS 7 signed data. You may guess who needs that. But invoices in Italy uh, are often nowadays uh, electronically and they are an XML file included in a signed, signed file. So we made these functions mainly for our Italian customers which you know, can read and write invoices. Yeah, in Cardis format. Embedded XML. Yeah. So file functions. We got read file MBS and write file MBS. Those are functions to make sure to write the file as quickly as possible or to read a file as quickly as possible. Because I had a project where binary stream wasn't fast enough. 
That may have changed in the new soldier version because this was made last year and last year uh, the, those functions were faster. But we'll see if, if um, the newer soldier functions are even faster. And especially uh, this avoids old APIs on APFS, but that may be a sort of obsolete for the newer soldier version. Then we have improvements for MacOS, where we wrote the file list MBS class, our class to quickly list files on Mac and Windows and Linux. We got the UN notification classes. That is the framework for, from Apple, the newer framework to show notifications to the user. We have a function to de determine uh, whether you have permissions to control another application via Apple events. Uh, you can just use the app events, you get uh, the warning dialog uh, your application wants to control. And this function allows you to check if this control, uh, this dialog would show up. And if, if it says the uh, dialog won't show up, um, this may help you. Also, you can request the dialog to show up now. It's also useful. Then we have improvements for StoreKit, the framework from Apple to uh, do in-app purchases in the, in the Mac App Store. And we have a new dialog to request a review. So you can ask the user to uh, give your app a few stars. And you can query the URL where the receipt for your app is stored. And we have new functions for subscriptions. So you can offer your application as a subscription and allow the user to sign up within the application. And there's the possibility to provide downloadable content. So you upload files to Apple and they provide them to the user over their network. And here is um, the dialog to confirm that you want to buy something. And this is our test application which just shows the product names uh, you defined and then you can buy one or two or look for uh, existing transactions. Then we have uh, web viewer functions. <coughs> we got the VK web view control. And that's our control to replace the HTML viewer in Sojo by using the newer um, WebKit controls on Mac. It uh, uses either the 64-bit WebKit 2 controls or the 32-bit WebKit uh, 1 control. So depending on which uh, target platform you build it for, you either get the one or the other. Both have about the same features. We got uh, progress change and title change events recently. We got print methods. So you can now finally get uh, your WebKit 2 content to print to a PDF. And we got a uh, delegate for our uh, for the normal HTML viewer in Sojo, so you can control what contextual menus are shown within your application. We also got the NSU cache class, which allows you to work with the uh, well, with the cache used for the HTML viewer in, in Sojo. Then we have the functions for the find bar. So if you have a text area control in your uh, Soldier application on Mac, you can use the Macos built-in features for having a find panel within your text area control. You can just enable it and then show it, maybe with a key combination, and you can quickly allow the user to find and replace text. Yeah, either for using our own NS text view based controls or for the built in social text area. Then we have improvements for Windows. We got the frontmost MBS function on the application class to work for Windows. It used to work only for Mac. So on Mac, it will tell you if your process is the front process. And on Windows, it now checks if your process owns the front window. But it may be useful to know if your application is the, the front application. We also got an activate window function on Windows. If your application is not in the front and you want to move a window to the front, there are a couple of things you need to do on Windows and this function does it all. So it can bring any window to the front. 
We also got a function to query the hard links for file. So if you have a file on Windows and it has several representation in the file system for the same data on the disk, uh, you can query the list of those um, folder uh, files. And we got uh, for our serial port class on Windows, we got the improved function to query the device list. So you can query which COM devices are currently on the Windows machine available. <coughs> we updated our function to draw rotated text for a for high DPI. So you can now draw sharp text rotated in your new applications. We also got a Windows Display MBS class, which allows you to enumerate all the displays on the computer and especially query the physical size of the display so you can calculate the DPI value and know how big you, are, you have to put your text so it appears um, exactly as big as if you would print it. We also got a File Info class, which allows you to query the, well, what Windows knows about the file, including dates. Um, we have a function to clear the browser session for the HTML viewer, which can be useful to forget cookies or cached content. We also got functions to enable spell checking and autocorrection on the text area on Windows. Um, I think Windows 8 and newer. And we got uh, functions to show the font dialog from Windows, so you can pick a font and um, with the Windows Show Font Panel class and it has properties so you can query all the styles you selected and which font. Then we have direct show improvements. We increase the resolution. Instead of using the default small resolution, we now I have a method to explicitly pick the highest available res resolution on the camera. We got compression settings, so you can pick which uh, encoder is used to encode your video. And for that we have class, of course. And we have properties for the... Uh, there are properties you can set, and for all those properties Microsoft offers standard dialogues, and those are here. So. Oh, I even made English screenshots. Um, so you can pick the settings for your camera, for the format, for the audio, and for the mixer, and for the storing the videos. And depending on what your camera can, of course, those dialogues look completely different. Then recently we got a class for the Windows uh, Pipe, Windows Pipe MBS, and that's a uh, placement uh, for the IPC socket in Sojo and this can be used to cross um, to send data from one application to another and even if one application is a service application this works fine <coughs> it can work in two modes either in byte mode like a normal socket or in message mode where it would make sure that if you send uh, a block of text on one side it will only call the event about receiving it when the bold block arrived. So you don't get some block, or just a part of a block. Like in byte mode, you get a part of the block when a part arrives, but in message mode, you get the bold block, always. And we have tested it between system services running in the background and the user application to control it, and you can wonderfully connect between those. <coughs> then we have improvements for Linux. All our plugins are built for Linux. That's a lot of work to just keep them building, even if a lot of functions are just for Mac or for Windows and they don't do anything on Linux. We still need the Linux counterparts to make sure you can build your application for all platforms. We now include function names in the binaries, which helps for debugging them a lot. And we got recently an icon model where you can query the icons for application files. So you can query individual uh, no, no, file type specific icons like a JPEG. You can also query the special folder icons. You can query previews for, for picture files with the system and show them to the user. Then we got improvements to DynaPDF. 
We now support Zugfert uh, 2 standard in Germany, a standard for digital invoices. And as I recently um, released version 2.0.1, we also support that. Uh, we got uh, the optimized functions to optimize image for color spaces. So if you have um, any PDF, you can just tell the plugin to convert all the images in the PDF to create scale to RGB or to CMK. We have support for the Dyna PDF raster MBI, MBS class to use uh, pictures on Windows with a new direct draw optimized picture format uh, used by Sojo. So you can directly have the, uh, the function raster uh, Dyna PDF page into a Sojo picture. Here's an example for rendering a transparent uh, PDF file with vector graphics. And there's Dyna PDF 5 coming somewhere, sometime. <laughs> yeah, <it's coughs> Jens will be available later and can probably give more details. But it will have an improved Unicode support. So we can finally uh, do some things we couldn't do before, like automatic font substitution. substitution. So if you have a font which doesn't have the character you're writing, we can pick the character from another font to replace it. And with the full Unicode support, there are some languages where you have to pre-process a text before you can actually um, put it on the PDF pages because some characters need to be uh, joined together and converted to another characters but to showing together. And we can uh, get a new function to verify digital signatures. So if you have a signed PDF, which you can do with Dyna PDF, you can later also verify whether the signature is still valid. And here's an example about an international text uh, which was put on a PDF page by Dyna PDF. So we have here um, a couple of uh, well, more exotic languages, uh, Bengali, Kyrgyzian, and all those languages can now be correctly rendered with Dyna PDF. And we got this here, graphic supports for the Dyna PDF class. So you can ask Dyna PDF for a graphics object for the current PDF page. A lot of work and we build it by creating a temporary picture object and giving you the graphics object for that and we um, make sure that we recognize all the calls on this graphic object to redirect them to the PDF page. You can even see the picture we use temporary behind and all the drawings to the picture, uh, to the graphics of the picture, are duplicated to the PDF. So let's see. Um, we support all the normal drawing commands, including draw and fill, ovals, rectangles, lines, polygons. You can draw text, of course, with all the properties Sojo offers you. You can measure the high. So we will actually give you the high we need in the PDF, which may be a little bit different than the high you have on, for on-screen drawing, because the fonts are not exactly the same usually. We also have a string width function, and you can draw a picture from Sojo, which we uh, will add to your PDF, of course, and we will preserve the transparency if you have a transparent picture. And if you call next page, we'll, we create a um, new page in, in the PDF and we even have an event for you so you can even do some preparement of the page like um, putting a background on the page before continuing to draw. Here's an example where we just are drawing a few lines, rectangles, a little bit text with styles on a PDF page. We also support vector graphics so if you draw something with uh, Sojo's vector um, functions, you can see on the left side the PDF output and on the right side uh, the drawing in Sojo. So you see it works with rotated text, it works with uh, transparency groups, and yeah, 
it works with uh, polygons, also the ice cone. And we support the rendering engine, uh, the report engine. So we got a couple of uh, example projects from Sojo to use our PDF output and draw the reports directly into a PDF document. And then we got shell MBS. Well, eventually there was a need for a replacement of the built-in Sojo shell. And uh, we got one for Mac, Windows and Linux. And it provides you, for example, um, the data for standard error and standard output separately, because some people need that. And you can send data for standard in, so you can pass data to the application and get back the output. We also got uh, <coughs> XML functions, and especially we got an XML validator class, which allows you to load an XML schema validate it against an XML file and make sure the XML you upload maybe to a web service is actually valid. And there were a couple of changes in the last years. So we removed uh, most, well, we removed all carbon only functions. Like we had a couple of extensions <coughs> for the window class, for example, which only worked for macOS carbon target. And as you know, all built Cocoa applications, we just removed them because you can't use them anyway. And if you still use them, they were doing nothing. We removed all of QuickDraw. That's a drawing framework Apple used years ago. We are no longer using it. And the Real Studio plugins are still available on demand if you ask for them. But I expect that everyone sooner or later will now move to the new Soldier version to get compatibility for macOS Catalina and of course uh, build 64-bit applications. But I still have a few people using real studio versions on Windows, so, but I hope they update too. <coughs> Our socket classes got support for IPv6 somewhere in between last year or the years before, I'm not sure. We have several, several of them. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know.